Interested in making an epic short film using only your phone? Here are five lessons I learned from making a sci-fi zombie apocalypse action film on my first smartphone shot short film. Back in 2016, I made my first ever smartphone shot short film called Redditus, a 15-minute sci-fi action film that featured martial arts, time travel, and lots of zombies, completely filmed on a Samsung Galaxy S7. In the filmmaking world, especially the Hollywood type, bigger is usually considered better. Bigger screens, bigger explosions, bigger actors, bigger muscles, bigger boobs. You get the idea. When it comes to cameras, this also seems to be the belief. The 70mm format IMAX cameras that Christopher Nolan or Zack Snyder use on their films are friggin' humongous. Prior to making my short film Redditus, I had been shooting for years with DSLR cameras from Canon, Nikon, and Panasonic, as well as a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Even earlier, a decade before that, I had been making student short films with large professional DV cameras video cameras that used a cassette tape-like mini DV format. With the ambitious concept and story for Redditus, which is one of my biggest productions to date, I wanted to challenge myself if I could capture these big ideas onto these smaller cameras and somehow prove that gear isn't everything when it comes to storytelling. After a few weekends of extended shooting, a ton of ingredients for fake blood and fleshy prosthetics, an army of zombie extras to feed, and a handful of awards to boot. Here are five lessons I learned from making my first smartphone shot short film. Obviously, the best advantage of using mobile devices is that they're, uh, mobile. Its small form factor allows you as a filmmaker to be more robust and efficient, having to carry less weight and gear around and of course, getting your camera to situations requiring more versatility, for example, tight spots or difficult angles. Another advantage of the small size is that the camera is less imposing to your talent and also to any public bystanders around. Perhaps you wanna make your film shoot to be more discreet, especially if you're in a public space and don't have a permit to shoot. Smartphones are perfect because everyone is carrying one anyways. One time, I was able to shoot an entire video inside the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, even though video recording was clearly prohibited. All because I was using a smartphone. As far as the guards knew, I was just another tourist taking photos. When it comes to talent, especially if they're not the professional kind, and you just gathered your friends and family to be in your short film, having a smaller or simpler camera in front of them can be less intimidating and almost invisible in some cases, allowing them to give a more natural performance. The drawback of using smaller cameras is that they are so lightweight, your footage can be prone to more shakiness and jitters, which can give your film an unprofessional look, unless that's the look you're going for. Stabilization is a must. And I don't mean the built-in camera stabilization, which can often give your footage a jello look, Using a solid tripod with a reliable phone mount or clip can vastly improve the production quality of your mobile short film. Personally, I recommend a light and portable video tripod like this Manfrotto Be Free Live, which is made of ultralight carbon material rather than the typical heavier aluminum builds. Also, make sure to get one with a fluid video head, which makes for smoother panning and tilt movement. Back in 2016, Full HD 1080p resolution was still pretty much the standard for video playback, although 4K TVs were definitely getting popular. The ability to shoot in 4K resolution at the time was usually reserved for higher-end cameras, not consumer-friendly DSLR cameras like Canon 70D or even the original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Having that extra high-resolution video recording capability with your smartphone camera meant your video could level up to those more expensive professional cameras 
without the hefty price tag. The advantage of shooting in 4K, even if your final output is only 1080p, is you will capture more information and detail than shooting in regular Full HD. Also, you can crop or zoom into the oversized 4K footage and get more flexibility in framing and composition options while editing. Lastly, having that 4K option, especially back then, ensures your footage is future-proofed for when it does become the video standard, which is actually happening right now. A disclaimer, editing 4K footage will require a powerful editing machine with more processing power, memory, and data storage. Otherwise, with slower machines, you can get away with using lower resolution proxy files. When using regular DSLR or mirrorless cameras, you can always count on having extra backup batteries, especially on long shoots that might take up a half or full day. We can safely say that gone are the days of replacement batteries on our phones. Rest in peace, Nokia. Although most phones these days do have large built-in batteries of 300 mAh or more, which is enough for a day of regular use such as calls, texts, and social media, do keep in mind video recording does take up a considerable amount of your phone's computing power and memory. So do expect it will drain your battery a lot more quicker. Of course, I learned this the hard way, shooting for hours in an outdoor location with no power outlets in sight. To add on that, we were shooting in 80 plus degrees Fahrenheit conditions. And so we also ran into phone overheating problems in one or two occasions that wouldn't allow us to video record for certain periods until it cooled down. The lesson here, of course, is to bring power banks on your shoot, even to the point of shooting while it is charging, tethered to the power bank. And also be mindful of your device's exposure under the sun. I ended up having my AD hold up an umbrella over the phone in some cases. Smartphone photography has come a long way with most devices, these days capable of capturing beautiful photos with gorgeous, vibrant colors with one click of a button, even if you have no photography skills. That's because modern smartphone cameras are equipped with AI that does all the hard work for you, such as exposure settings and HDR. That's great and all if you're a beginner or casual photo snapper, but when it comes to filmmaking, these automatic settings can be a hindrance, perhaps due to lack of research or preparation or just lack of time. We shot all our footage on auto mode, meaning the camera AI decided all the exposure settings for us. This was easily apparent with a lot of our scenes with blown out overexposed skies and also the heavy blacks in the shadows. Ideally, it's best to have all your exposure settings controlled manually to avoid things like backlighting or having that too contrasty look that the camera AI loves to do on these smartphones. I had to mitigate the over contrasty footage in post-production, bringing shadows up and highlights down in the color correction phase. Although crushed blacks and blown out whites are pretty much impossible to fix. My last lesson in hindsight while trying to make a short film on your smartphone is to really invest in using a paid professional camera app like Filmic Pro. If I had used such an app back then, I would have been able to avoid the previous problems of exposure because these kind of apps have full manual controls, much like on a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Also, these apps can let you save your footage at a much higher bitrate rather than the highly compressed video files coming from your stock camera app. Higher bitrate means higher video quality but also bigger file sizes. Lastly, professional camera apps like Filmic Pro or MC Pro 24 FPS on Android allows you to shoot with a flat or log color profile, giving you better dynamic range so that your footage isn't as contrasty and you are able to play with it more when it comes to color grading for a really cinematic look. These were some of the hard lessons I learned in making my first ambitious smartphone shot film. Since then, I've been doing things a lot more different. And that's just part of our journey as a filmmaker or visual storyteller. Let me leave you with this final thought. Sometimes what's more important is not the brand or type of camera, but rather what is in front of the camera, such as good performances, production design, and of course, the story. But perhaps even more important than that, 
What matters most is who is behind the camera. After all, a camera, whether it's a Blackmagic cinema camera or just your smartphone, is just another paintbrush. It's the artist that makes the art, not the paintbrush. Hey, if you found this video helpful or inspiring, please support the algorithm by giving it a like or subscribe to the channel to see more awesome content like this. Until next time, reframe your mind.